Hi there folks, welcome back. I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store and a few weeks back Phil and I made a video about a Nui Nui where I just handed him ukuleles one after the other. He played them, you got to hear the same song without any interruption, no talking from me in the middle and it was really well received and I know that it helped quite a few people that were on the fence about which model to go for. So we're going to try something like that again today except we're going to look at a completely different subject. We're going to look at seven, that's seven, Hawaiian Koa tenors. And we're going to start with the Martin T1K, which is made in Mexico. The Martin T1K is a satin Koa finish. Moving on to the Ana Ole AT Koa, which is the um, Pearl City Hawaii made Koa tenor. Moving on from there, we're going to look at the Romero replica Koa, which is the Vietnamese made replica of Pepe Romero Jr.'s uh, high spec handmade instruments. Uh, we all know the replica, I don't need to introduce it. Then we're going to move on to Koaloha with the KTM 00. Then we have a Kamaka HF3, a Kanalea K1, so that's all three of the Hawaiian Ks one after the other. And then wait for it, we have a Kulau Koa tenor at the end. So that's four Hawaiian Koa tenors at the end there, one after the other. But which one is the best? I'm going to hand you over to Phil now and we're going to go through all seven.
to talk about it. So Phil and I have just finished filming the video and rather than do a normal outro where I say, you know, give us a call 01202 430820 or email us at alex at ukulele.co.uk, Phil and I thought we'd just talk about what we were talking about when filming the video, give you some of our opinions, and they are just that, there are opinions, everyone has a different, you know. Keeps their own. But just talking first about the first two that many people compare, which was the T1K and the Anna Ole, uh, what did you think? I think there's an obvious difference between between both of them. I think that the Martin, um, it does feel a little bit more restrained in comparison to the Anarole. The mm-hmm. Anarole kind of feels a bit more open when you're playing it. I think the big giveaway for me is when you're playing a ukulele and it kind of feels like it's playing itself. Yeah. And you don't have to do the work and it's, and it's kind of working with you and for you. Um, and the uh, Anarole had a slightly kind of, a little bit more of that to it for me personally. Yeah, it sounded um, like that to my ear when you were playing. Like, there's nothing wrong with the Martin. The T1Ks are really good, but it felt like, it felt like the T1K is right at the top end of that factory mm. budget. Yeah. And the Anna Ole kind of overlaps by being, you know, the finish on the Anna Ole isn't as good as the Martin. You know, it looks, it looks frankly just a tiny bit sloppy, but sound wise and feel wise, it's very seasoned, isn't it? You know, it's got that salt and pepper that you want to... That's it, that's exactly it. But again, as we said, the Martin's not a bad sounding or, or it's, it's a great sounding instrument. Yeah, and people um, love the Martins. We, yeah. there's, al- there's always people that, I mean, not so much during the pandemic, but you know, traditionally people have come in to look at the Martin and then weighed it up against several things. And the Martin's always done very well, which is why we always continue to stock them. Um, yeah, but then we also commented off camera about the difference. So the Anna Ole is about two hundred and fifty, three hundred pound cheaper than the Romero. But not only does the Romero have all the bells and whistles to look at, you know, it's got the abalone and the Koa is ext- very, very nicely figured. It's got planetary tuners, but the actual feel of the Romero, when I handed it to you, I felt like I was handing you a premium instrument yeah and I'm not sure whether you'll see it in in the takes of me playing or anything like that but um, to give away a little bit of behind the scenes a couple of the takes where you know you would say to me afterwards do that one again you could play that one again and th- there's an element of playing one instrument after another instrument and going wow this feels really different and that might be just different because it's different or in a good or a bad way or whatever um, and the Romero does feel very different to the two before it uh, it felt to me that when I did that second take when you said to me you could play that better I kind of went right it wants to be for this piece maybe it just wanted to be a little bit more picked yeah and it's it's funny how those different instruments kind of respond differently to different things mm. um, and the tonal kind of quality of them it is yeah. Would you say for the slight difference in price between the Romero and the next one up, which would be the Koaloa, the Kamaka K ones, would you say that it sits nicely alongside them? I I would, and I think all I think all seven of them kind of do because they have a, a unique quality to each of them. Yeah. You know, so they they're very much what flavour are you looking for? And they're all a similar flavour because they are all Koa. Yeah, you would pay half the money for the Martin. So, you know, to expect the same instrument as a K1 is, uh, you know, just as a two I'm looking at now off camera. Like the Martin has a bit less going for it than those, but at half the price, you know, is it is it half the instrument? No. What was your favourite of the seven? I mean, we're getting into it. The last four were very, very kind of, they felt very special in the hand, um, but for different reasons. Sorry to not give a direct answer, but the the color low has always been a favourite. Um, Do you want to know what my favourite? T- as a listener, yeah, go on. My favourite two were the Kawaloa and the Kulau, and I love uh, the Kanale sound and the Kamaka sound. But I just felt like the Kawaloa. When you get to that, you've all, I've already heard three instruments, and then the Kawaloa just kind of jumps off the page. Because if anything, it plays itself. You're, yeah. you're, the more you give it, the more it can take. But actually, you give it a bit less, and you were playing, I would say, more delicately. But the volume was there, um, and the Kulau had a similar, th- 
thing about it. The Kula had a real traditional, slightly more introvert sound. But yeah. But they were very interesting because, again, with the Koalala, um, yeah, with the Koalala, uh, you said to me, do a second take. And I, I was really pleased you said that because I really enjoyed playing it. Oh, that's and I good. I think in the end of the first take, you'll probably see a very rare thing, which is me actually smiling. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, again, yeah, I did hit it softer because it did play itself. And then what I really enjoyed about the Kulao is that it's, it's a little bit new. I've not played too many of them personally. So I really liked playing it for that reason. But it yeah. did feel very kind of Koalala-esque with a high G. Yeah, okay. Which was great. I think uh, the K1 that we showed off is a particularly expensive K1 because it's premium grade Koa. Mm. And to look at here, it's clear that the Koa is cosmetically, aesthetically, it's the most pleasing. Uh, the Kamaka and the Kulao are probably the plainest of the two, but tonally they have very similar sounds. It's that traditional sound, and that it's clear to me that's what those two do best. The Martin is trying to emulate that sound, yeah, and so is the Ana Ole. But I couldn't yeah. really tell you what the Ramiro is trying to do. The Ramiro is a bit ballsier than a traditional sound, but not quite a Kawaloha, not quite the clean sound of a Kanalea. So, but but I think you know it, it's. It's allowing that Romero to stand out on its own and have its own turf and go, you know, th this is what I'm going to offer for you. Um, the Canalea, though, felt very balanced to me, yeah. which was really nice. When playing it, I didn't feel like I had to go hit that string a bit harder or it kind of, it, you know, it felt very balanced and present. I always feel when I'm recording Canaleas that they record better yeah. than other instruments. Like They're easy to record because everything comes out equally like a very even sound well look what did you guys think at home you it's nice to occasionally just share our our thoughts after we play these things because the beauty of filming a video with phil is that we talk in between takes and we form opinions based on what's right in front of us rather than 10 years of experience looking at them and yeah but what did you think at home folks do you have one of these instruments and how does it sing for you uh, if you have any questions, get in touch. But, you know, I'm Alex and... Uh, I'm Phil. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you later.